Did we come from this way or... Oh, this is Elizabeth's room, right? Yes, okay, we do not need to be here, no. Which means, I think I want to go back to... Von Volner's room. Because of that one little thing that we didn't open before. Sir Johann von Volner. Yeah, I opened this one. But there were two, right? I thought there were two. Was in Napoleon's room? Hey, those boots! Japaru has those too. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of Napoleon's room. Yeah, we didn't open this thingy. Did we? Oh, it's one effort point. I really don't want to use Carmelite water for that. Uh, we'll come back later, okay? We'll come back. Yeah. We have to be able to come back because we have to talk to Lord Mortimer later. And hopefully by the time we come back, we'll have one spare point. Let's go down. Oh, what? We're not allowed to go down? Okay. What about this side? Oh, we're not allowed to go down at all. But what about the people we haven't talked to yet? Dang. Dang. Okay, well, let's just go back to Lord Mortimer then. I don't think it's anybody that we've talked to so far. It's my mom. I feel like it's more likely that it's my mom. Which makes the whole thing kind of difficult, doesn't it? Can you please recount to me the thing about playing cards again first? I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. Will you remind me of the facts we already know about? Elizabeth Adams was killed last night. But Piaggi was with Holm and I until late at night. As for Bonaparte and Washington, they left us after midnight, both tired. Will you remind me of the facts we already know about? Elizabeth Adams was killed last night. But Piaggi was with Holm and I until late at night. As for Bonaparte and Washington, they left us after midnight, both tired. Napoleon left after midnight. Napoleon said he stayed until midnight. I guess it lines up. Okay. I don't have a culprit. I believe I've identified the murderer. Really, Louis? All right then. Please think carefully before you give me your answer. This is a very, very serious accusation. Mmm, out of all the male guests that we talked to so far, I don't think it's any of them. I don't want to say it's female just based off that handle, though. Because aside from the stab wounds, there was also the poison. But, um, I think we did come to the conclusion that the killing blow was the nine stabs, so I guess we'll just say it's female. Oh my god. We know Emily's sister is dead already. It could be Emily? We're not sure. Actually, it could be a suicide, couldn't it? But wasn't she being held upright? I don't know. From what I've found out, I... I... I believe that my mother is the culprit. Even though... I find it hard to accept. Sarah? But why her? I don't think our investigation is airtight at all, but I do feel like they want me to say it's my mother. The murderer is a woman. Well, th that is the main thing, I guess, but all of these kind of, they're all kind of true. The 
print left on the knife near the body was left by a slender hand, without a doubt the hand of a woman. And there aren't many female guests. I see. Anything else, really? I found out that there was a, a long history between Elizabeth and my mother. She had been her personal doctor and had tortured her throughout her childhood. Ah, oh. and so she could have tried to silence Elizabeth so the truth wouldn't get out and damage her reputation. Well, it's possible. Have you anything else? I'm thinking about it now, but if we take the visions as fact, then we know that Emma is dead, but we also know that my mom is missing a hand. I guess she can kill... Ugh. Now I'm not so sure anymore, because... Can someone with one hand really stab a perfectly able woman to death? Oh, I'm not sure, but we can't back out anymore. Elizabeth thought that... Mother was going to kill her. Difficult to believe in a simple coincidence in light of recent events. Indeed, it's uncanny. Anything else? Just wanted to pause a little bit and look at the talents we got, or the traits. Ac accuser. You denounce a suspect. Implacable. My own mother. My own mother. We got a logic point for saying it's my mother, so I'm, I'm guessing that's right. <laughs> I think that there's more than enough evidence here. Indeed, it's very worrying. Everything seems to indicate that your mother is responsible for Elizabeth's murder. Given the distinguished guests and the political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Now that we've examined the question from all sides, maybe you could explain to me why you asked me here, my lord. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. What was your question? She isn't missing, you know. What? what? What do you mean? My mother has left traces in every nook and cranny of your island, my lord. She's definitely here. Now, what worries me most is why she doesn't show herself. Mm, that doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities, and yours, in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him, because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Did my mother sell arms? I guess it's not too surprising, given the secret society business. Isn't Bonaparte a bit young to deserve so much attention? Well, you come straight to the point. I like that. Indeed, if you knew just how much you remind me of him. Trust me, I'll wager that Monsieur Napoleon will soon prove himself. I'm working on it, at least. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the 
official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? You tell me. You tell- There was. There was. It's that book from the very, very beginning of the game. I don't know how much I can trust Lord Mortimer, but I guess I'll just assume the best in him for now. Yeah. She... She was looking for someone. What, what do you mean? In Paris, we were working on a smuggling case to do with occult objects. Ah. We had just arrested a dealer who intended to go to you to meet a buyer. My mother was here to find out to whom he intended to sell his stolen treasure. Oh. Uh, what was the name of your dealer? <laughs> Von Borg shirt, I think. Brochette or... Oh god, I don't remember which one it is. I think it's this one. The dealer was called Von Burchard. As for the buyer, he was unknown to us. Hmm. No, I don't know anything about that. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Do I want to tell you? I think it's the first two combined, but it's more that she's afraid of someone finding out about the thing she discovered, right? I think. Her not coming back to the manor after so long makes me wonder if she's wary of someone. Well, certainly. But whom? The only ones who were present during her stay were Sir Gregory, Duchess Hillsborough, Mr. Von Volner, and myself. Duchess... Hillsborough is Emma. We don't have to- No, don't ask about this one. I don't think so. It seems you're close friends. What, what can you tell me about Sir Gregory? Gregory? Oh, he's one of those cantankerous old men who hates losing at chess. He's a little eccentric and rather conservative. I'm sure you've met the type. Well, actually, I don't judge people on how they look. <coughs> and you do well not to. What with his manner of continuing to wear makeup as he does, Gregory often gives off an unhealthy image. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jesse, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, <laughs> or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. Can we ask about fascinating? <laughs> the armistice between the Russians and the Turks. Russia's come out of it having officially won Crimea, which gives it direct access to the Black Sea. And at the same time, the Mediterranean Sea. I'm worried about the decisions Sarina Catherine might decide to take. She's a woman who managed to get rid of her husband to accede to the upper reaches of power. Gaining access to the Mediterranean Sea remains her main objective. When she still had that dear Potemkin as her lover, I could always find out about her intentions, but those days are over. Yeah, yeah, what you said. <laughs> You're speaking of Grigory Alexandrovich Potemkin? The very man. The little devil behind the mother of all Russians. Since his death, I know absolutely nothing of what the Tsarina is up to. Oh, really? Ah. Yes, I didn't mean to shock you. Uh, please forgive me. Let's just say that, in my position, it is often advantageous to know about the habits and customs of world leaders. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. <laughs> Are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the third. 
My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the siege of Saint-Jean d'Acre. Why did you look so angry? Mother lulled my childhood with tales of the Crusades. How Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus had to battle it out to achieve their ends. And how Guy de Lusignan, having broken his word, launched the siege of Saint-Jean d'Acre. Oh, I see Sarah's lessons have inspired new enthusiasts. Good on you, because not everyone can claim they know as much at your age. Thank you. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know, but I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. Whoa! And she shot her with a pistol. You know! Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. One last thing. Although, I don't know if there is a connection. I'm listening. A gate was forced the other night near the wharf. Yes. Pretty serious, just a few small things damaged. Oh, <gasps> that's right! There was a gun case there! An empty gun case! Oh, wait, are you, are you saying that I was the one who broke it? I didn't break it, did I? I don't think I did. But I'll say sorry anyway. Sorry, my lord, uh, but I was searching for leads to my mother. I thought I was hot on her trail and didn't take any precautions. Well, you could have reported it to a servant. But never mind. I shall put it down to your ardor and anxiety. However, please try to respect my estate in future. I certainly will. Please accept my sincerest apologies. You're rich as hell. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. We're going to meet Godoy soon, aren't we? Hmm. The room is just opposite Mortimer's study. The box room? Right here. Okay. Wow, this chapter is really long. Holy crap, we've been playing for two hours already. Oh. I mean the chapter as in chapter five, because we have chapter five, six, seven for episode two. Damn. Dang. I'm not sure how much we can trust Mortimer. But yeah, let's just let's just assume the best in people for now. I don't know. He invited me here, but it seems like he might be using me to find other things out. Uh, I'm guessing there's no point in going back. I can't even go back to my own room, so yeah, okay. Look for clues. There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, 
I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. This is the room that my mother often sealed herself in while she was here. I can consult my notes? Okay. Probably we're gonna be solving a puzzle soon. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. Hmm. Oh! What is this disc? Take it. Lodestone. Can we see it here? Lodestone? It's not a book, it's here. Round magnet. Oh, that's not jelly. But I'll have it anyway. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors, too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised, and receives the light from his savior. We'll forego this for now. It might be important though, judging by how they gave it a cutscene and all. The door appears to be locked on the other side. We can try to open it. I think I heard something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like like a key falling to the floor. Great. Well, we'll see if it works. We didn't need to spend any points for this one. Woo! It's open. <laughs> yes, it is, Louis. Yes, it is. Man with a sword. Jelly! Honey. I couldn't have hoped for better. Hey, is it jelly or is it honey? Make up your mind. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. Man with a sword. Let's inspect that last. A chest with the occult symbol representing air. Right key, left key? Whoa, there's two locks. Difficulty seven. This would be a good time to use the Carmelite water, I think. Are you kidding me? All it was was golden elixir. But we did get an amber fragment, which is good. That is good. The New Testament. This is probably for the puzzle solving later. This book is incredibly precious. I believe this is the book my mother referred to when calling upon the Lord. This volume dates from the first edition by Glutenberg. It's the first book that was ever printed. Wow. The pages are covered in annotations in Latin, French, and Hebrew. Someone spent years studying this Bible. It's so precious, but people just wrote on it. Volume of the Glutenberg Bible. Oh, there's a lot here, okay? There's a lot. This is probably for the puzzle solving. I will leave it alone for now. I guess I'll just come back later. Yeah. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. More puzzle elements. Sophistria. An important book on the subtle art of sophism. Whatever that is. 
several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. It looks like someone touched this commode recently. There are fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. Okay. Painting of St. Mark from the collection of the apostles by Guido Reni. Let's look at the man with a sword. St. Paul painted by Guido Reni. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange. There's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? Um, leave her now. 11 and underlined it twice. Yeah, my faith. Faith is in the Bible and the man with a sword. 11 underlined twice? Oh. Oh my god, there's way too many to read. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit not be more glorious? Whoa, this puzzle seems really... You can't solve it by accidentally stumbling upon it, that's for sure. Hmm... We could get a hint by using Carmelite water on the... Oh, that's such a waste. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code. There, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere and it must be associated with the figure 11. Paul. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure maybe? I'm gonna save up my point for now and we will leave. Paul? Is that in our notes? No, that doesn't go in our notes, unfortunately. Paul. Paul 11 underlined twice. It's gotta be one of these ones, right? But Paul underlined twice? Something about pilgrims? Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who think only of earthly things. No, I think we need the other code as well. Holy crap, this one seems really hard. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. So we have the figure 11 twice underlined, and a story of a group of pilgrims Wait, that's the same who thing. It looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code. There, oh there my must gosh. be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure, maybe? I can't believe they gave me the exact same dialogue. I just wasted one point. That's disappointing. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. Oh, I need, a, I need the points for the paintings here, too. Shoot. Painting of St. Mark from the collection of the apostles by Guido Reni. Nothing here. Wasn't there a painting of someone, Paul? What do I know about this apostle? Could have used my point for this one. Jeez. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. Uh. St. Paul is the only saint to be presented twice in these paintings. Contrary to the other apostles. How come? I'll sit on it. They have to give me a way to solve this, even if I don't have enough effort points. So I'm gonna try to look around and see if we can do that first, because I. There's gotta be a better way. Oh, I didn't look at this one, did I? The drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. 
he's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. So there's a lot of paintings of apostles here, and something about St. Paul in the figure 11 underlined twice. If this is some Bible thing, like, I'm not gonna know it. Um, and a story about pilgrims. Is there an apostle that's associated with pilgrims? Gospels and the acts of... Hmm. Analyze it again. No, this is useless. We can read these. All of them. <laughs> And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. No, let's try to see if we can find some 11s here. Yeah, like chapter 11, verse 11, something like that. We can go through all of them. I can take all day. Verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Doesn't seem like it helped. It's gotta be about Paul, though. We can't just go to random places. Matthew? 22, 11 underlined twice. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. John, chapter 2, verse 11. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law with one another. Why do ye not rather suffer injustice? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Ah, look. Here's a message. Oh! It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian. He's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today. I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark, who will reveal the answer to them. Prussian? Volner? I must have a word with him. Wait, what? I was randomly clicking on these. I don't even know how to solve this properly. Oh no, like, do I... Oh my god, Epistles of Paul, one out of two. To Epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 7. I'll follow the first group to Mark. So is there something else in Mark? Watch out for the Prussian. Okay, well... Mark is... St. Mark. But how do we know which one... I can try all of them. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jerus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Nope. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. I'm really not sure what the proper way to solve this is. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. First group to Mark. Is there another number here? Maybe verse 1? There is a verse 1 here, chapter 7, verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. Nothing. 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 Hey, wait, there's a chapter 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Oh, wait. A note from mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? 
Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does Mother mean by that? <laughs> I guess we're supposed to follow this trail... Yeah. Oh! Yeah, we were supposed to find this one first, but then I accidentally found the second one. Oh, how many are there in total? The youngest apostle... Um... How do I even find that out? I know nothing about the Bible. But we've already... Hey, that's new. There's something else behind this painting. It says, half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? That's definitely related to the Bible verses we're supposed to look for. Um, hold up. This is St. Mark, right? A drawing of the Apostle Matthew. No. Painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. Hold up, hold up. Maybe after we find a message, the paintings change? Yeah, what the heck? We never saw any of this before. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. Hey, wait! That means it's him. He's the youngest apostle. Right. This painting is therefore associated with the answer which E had to give to my mother. Now, I just need to know how to recover the answer. So the answer is related to St. John. The painting looks like it's been taken down recently. But wasn't my mother said that she would wait for an answer hidden behind the apostle? Ah, of course. There's something written behind the painting. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three <laughs> to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? Damn, that is pretty... Pretty cryptic. It's gotta be a way to decode the chapter and the verses. Can we see it here? I wish they would put that here too because I can't remember what the hell Louis just said. Uh, let's try to do it without using these. Cause I don't wanna, I wanna keep my points if I can. You're Saint John. Saint John. No, so this is, yeah, this menu here, I feel like is really cumbersome for the puzzle they want to do, because there's so many sub-menus. John. John. Something about adding one to the left and then minusing three to the... Okay, look, there's only four choices here, okay? It's gotta be one of these. Wanna just guess? He that believeth on him <laughs> is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Okay, well, it's not that one. No, we could just guess, or we could listen to that again. Yes. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? Okay, okay, let me go back and look at the verse numbers and see if we can figure this one out. Are there Johns anywhere else? Oh shoot, there's multiple Johns! Oh, what the heck? There's a Gospel according to St. John, and there is a John, and there's a Revelation to John. They really made it so that you can't guess this, holy crap. Okay, okay, I wrote it down. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle on the second day? <laughs> Is that a hint? Maybe chapter two? But then something about how they shall add one companion to their left, chapter one, and three to their right, chapter one, verse 
3? Is there a chapter 1 verse 3 anywhere? Holy crap, we could be here all day long. Alright, let's use a jelly here. Only one of them, okay? Remember the aforementioned book? Think about the figures. They should add a companion to their left and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code, the one Mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to, and now John is telling them prophecies? So, the adding one to the left, and then minusing, hold on, what was it again? Adding one to the left, and then three to the right, is in relation to Paul? What we just did for Paul? Is that it? Paul. Okay, one to the right. 12, chapter 12, verse 14, something like that. Chapter 12, verse Verse 14. Well, we don't see any of that here. I'm looking through the Johns first, like the John, Revelation to John. Chapter 12. Oh! Chapter 12, verse 14. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time. From the face of the serpent. Hey, yes! a new note. It's been folded carefully in the corner of this page. The writing, it, it, it's not my mother's. S. I found the book in your effects. I've concealed it where no one can get their hands on it. I can assure you, awaiting your instructions, I will hear your reply like he who hears the angel. Hears the angel? What does that mean? Oh my god! Oh. It's probably the place where she was expecting to get the location of the next note. Yeah, I figured that much too. Okay, so if we're following the pattern here, we have to figure out which apostle hears the angel. Which apostle hears the angel? Was it this guy? Word of the angel? Word of the Lord? A drawing of the apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Who appears here in the guise of an angel. Guise of an angel. Guise of an angel. He who hears the angel. Similar enough? Yeah? No? <laughs> what did it say behind here again? There's something else behind this painting. It says half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? Half of each group will join the city of Corinth. So, I think there was a Corinthians in here. Um, not here. Corinthians 1 or 2. Half of each group. We started with chapter 12, verse 14. So we half each of those. Chapter 6, verse 7. Chapter 6, verse 7. Yes! It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian. He's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today. I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark, who will reveal the answer to them. Prussian? Volner? I must have a word with him. And that first group of pilgrims. How many are there now? If I refer to the chapter I'm reading at the moment, six. Yes, now that makes sense. That was the one that I accidentally stumbled upon the first time around. Chapter 6, verse 7. First group to Mark. So, okay, hold on. So chapter 6 in Mark? Is that what we're looking for? Mark. No Mark? Saint Mark. Chapter 6 in Mark? Whoa, wait, there's no chapter 6 here. It's gotta be one of them, though. Four choices? In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark, who will reveal the answer to them. Was there a Mark painting here? I mean, we could just brute force it, but let's see I'll if we can... Later. Yeah, Mark. Were you Mark? Painting of Saint Mark from the collection of the Apostles by Guido Rini. There's nothing worth noticing here. 
Uh oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. It's a sentence in Hebrew. No. No. We're not gonna. Crap. Crap. Wait. Wait, okay? Let's try the other stuff. Because I'm really, really low on effort points right now. I really don't want to spend any more. Behind the painting? No. Nothing of value here. There are finger marks. Deliberately drawn in the dust. Eight in all. Would that be verse eight or chapter eight? It's too cumbersome for me to unhook here. But judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. So nothing behind it. Eight? It seems like we'll have to decode the message. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. It's a sentence in Hebrew. Okay. Alright. Well, even if we get this one, we still don't know what it means, right? It's just that we're wondering, hey, why is it in Hebrew? Because we don't have linguistics right now. We can never find out what it means. So let me just try and see if we can... Oh, we can't actually see the dust. Something eight. I'll follow the first group to Mark. Who will reveal the answer to them. It's gotta be one of these ones anyway, right? Oh, there's nothing eight here. Okay. First group to Mark. Could it just mean the Gospels and Acts of the Apostles, but not Mark itself? Something to do with chapter eight here? Does anybody have an eight? Anywhere here? Chapter 10, verse 8. Could that be a thing? And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a note here. A message from Mother in reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond <gasps> the nightmare. What does she mean by that? Well, it doesn't sound like a literal thing, right? Unless if there is a place called the Nightmare. I'm guessing it's a metaphor. I need to figure out what this means. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious. Wow, I can't believe we actually did this. That was... That was painful. Okay, actually, the only part that was really, really bad was clicking on random ones to find the note. But the first one, once you find the first one, which I'm not really sure what the proper method of finding it was, just finding a chapter 11 verse 11, I guess. But after you find that one, it wasn't that bad, which I'm thankful for. Bible's note. The Gutenberg Bible. We must leave urgently, but first, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Well, we got no clue what that means. But, I am very glad to be out of here. What? I could have found the conversation between my mother and her partner? Oh, I forgot to read the whole thing in full again after I found every message. But it was basically a conversation between Sarah and Emma, where they were trying to hide something, right? And then something about how they should be careful of Von Volner? Hmm. Okay. I convinced Lord Mortimer of the culpability of a suspect. I discovered my mother's message. However, I didn't understand it. And I guess I could have found more notes? Maybe I accidentally skipped to the end or something. Well, whatever. Whatever, we did it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, give me that. Okay. We have four points. Mm, linguistics and science. We don't have right now. I wonder if I should be changing my focus a little bit, though. Because 
right now, seeing as how we really don't have... Oh, but leveling... Oh, leveling up grants you three effort points. I didn't know that. Oh. In that case. Yeah, because I've noticed that so far, we are always running super, super low on effort points. So I'm wondering, oh, maybe I should go back to mastering some skills first. But um, if we get effort points, that's good. That's good. But do we have any books for linguistics and um, what is it? Science? Questioning, occultism, linguistics. So we have a linguistics book right here. Oh, I can't read it right now. Yes. Okay. Linguistics... But that's the only one. Okay, so I think what I can do is do something like one point, and then I'll read the next time, because it's gonna pop up soon. And then for science, I'll be like that. And then, maybe logic? Yeah, getting logic to level two would be pretty good, as well as vigilance. Uh, I hope this works out the way I want it to, because the linguistics thing. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Okay, let's put it here. There we go. And if we do this... Now we will equip the linguistics book here. And what else are we looking for in particular? Conviction? Hey, actually we have linguistics level 1 already. Oh, was that because of a book I was reading before, or...? I don't know, who cares? <laughs> it's a little bit confusing because we can't compare it side by side. No. Well, it would be good to get something in Conviction, or Vigilance. Those are really the only two skills that I'm close to leveling up. Subterfuge, I'm sort of interested in too, because we've been running into a lot of stuff, and if we can level this up to level 2, then we can start unlocking things for free, which would be really, really good. Cultism, erudition, questioning. What's the one I wanted again? Conviction. I don't see any conviction books right here. Mm, politics? How much do I have in politics? Level 1? Well, I suppose we could. I just think it's better for us to focus all of our points on one thing if we can. Yeah, politics. Politics. Linguistics. Oh, manuscript? Oh, no, no, it's being read. Linguistics. Oh, uh, actually, it says right here that we're already level 1. So... Why are we reading a linguistics book? <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't. I'll just put it off. Yeah, because... Ah, okay, okay. It depends on what I'm reading then. Oh, it actually shows up immediately here. Oh, okay. Yeah, questioning... Questioning we also have a lot of books for, but at the same time, this one's gonna take a while to get to level 3. So, we'll go with this.